Hello, Ian here from Dark Blaze Workshop. I'll come back to another video, and this one we're painting Hagrid. Okay, so this is one of the, uh, the larger figures for obvious reasons, but um, still got fun to do. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Alright, here we go. Um, Citadel's Morn Fang Brown. First colour up. Okay, so second coat of the Morn Fang. So don't forget to do inside the uh, inside the jacket. That's nice and quick. So for the trousers, uh, my new favourite colour, German grey. Uh, same as the Weasley twins, we're uh, a drop of paint, two drops of water, a drop of uh, Vallejo's flow improver. Because I'm looking to keep the the highlights of the zenithal priming I'll try and pull it in where the, uh, the creases are. So I'm pulling the pigment towards where the fold is. I need a little bit more paint on. Coat. I'm gonna go with this Steel Legion drab because I was looking at the looking at the box art and there's a little bit of green in the raincoat, so I'll try about 50-50 mix. I'm using the Baylor brand because that's gonna be the highlight of the like the jacket he's wearing. So you know it'll, it should tie everything in quite nicely then. So um yeah, let's make a start on the uh, coat. So I've I've done well a, a drop of the Steel Legion, um, a drop of the Baylor Brown, a couple of drops of water, and a, a drop of the Flow Improver. Purely because I want to try and, you know, keep the highlights and shadows. You know, I spent about all of two minutes doing the priming. <laughs> I'm going to save that work. So it does make it easier when you know where the shadows and highlights are going to go, especially when you're learning. It gets a bit complicated when you uh, use like a directional light. So it's easier just to uh, Pretend that the light is coming from above. I forgot to say I've, I've given the you might have noticed I've given the hair a coat of the, the German grey the same that I used on the trousers. I had it there sitting on the palette, I thought oh, dark grey that'll do for his hair. Alright, see those bubbles there, you need to get rid of them. You can 
either dab your brush in them or if you give them a quick blow you should burst them because it might spoil uh, it might spoil the uh, the smooth paint effect okay I'll carry on and we'll come back let's try okay so go for a third coat of the Steel Legion drab and the Baylor brown but this time I'm just going into the just to reinforce the recesses um, and if I put too much on or if I go onto the highlight area it's just a case of wetting the brush and then pushing the pigment back into the area that I wanted to go into I'm going to do an Agrax wash on this anyway. Um, the curve is coming out the way there so I, I don't really want to go into that area so I'm going to get water and I'm pushing that back up so it doesn't go into the highlight. thing I like about this colour combination is it looks weird going on but it dries really nicely I wasn't expecting that at all makes your painting look amazing <laughs> okay right I'll do the rest of that off camera um, but I've also mixed some scale 75 uh, black leather with a little bit of black and that's what I'm going to use for the, the belt I'll stay away from the buckle for now It's a really nice colour because there's, um, there's a bit of purple in it. And you can't go wrong with purple. Right, same again. I'll finish that off camera. So for his um, shirt, I've, um, I've mixed a colour that I, that I had um, some spare colours that I had already on my palette on the the box art it's like a desaturated purple but I've gone a bit lighter um, I've used it was like a lilac colour and then added some like a reddy brown to it and it's come out like a dusty pink and I quite like it actually so I'll use that for now because we'll, um, we'll darken it down with a the shade anyway. So that's that colour done. So I think we've pretty much got all the colours um, blocked in now apart from the boots which I'm going to do with German grey anyway. Um, so yeah I forgot to do the belt on the back there so that's done. Um, ready for the shades now. Okay so I've used a mix of Agrax and medium. It's 50-50 and I've, I've done the, the jacket bit and I've gone in the shirt as well. And now I'm going to use it for just the recesses on the coat. And I'm not going to bother feathering it out because the, the subsequent highlights will cover all that up anyway. So I'll just stick into the shadows for now. And I did the medium because I wanted to thin it down. I didn't want such a, a great transition. I just wanted a subtle change. And I've made that V there, so I'm going to wet my brush. 
and further out there. Okay, so that's still drying, but what um, what I wanted to say was uh, with the 50-50 the mix, I, I would go in the shadows and I would be pulling the pigment down at the same time, but if, if I had my brush there by mistake or something, I'd just get some water and just feather it down. So... Um, you still get that transition then, you you won't get the coffee stain in um, that you sometimes see. But it, it's drying quite nicely now. And um, I think once the highlights go on now, it'll start to look really good. So if if you wanted to leave it there, you know, it's, it's perfectly good for tabletop. It looks really nice. You know, you've got highlights, you've got shadows. Um, so yeah, if you want to finish there, it's totally up to you. Give it a give it a varnish and put it on a base. Um, I'd be happy with that. But, uh, so if you want to go a bit further, stick with me and we'll carry on. So back to the, the jacket then. I've got a 50-50 mix of... Um, Mornfang and uh, XV88 and I'm just going to stay well I'm just blocking in where the highlights are so just follow the lines And again, it's quite thin, it's uh, two drops of paint, two drops of water, you know, a drop each of Mornfang and XV88 and then two drops of water. So what we're going to do is build up the highlights on these parts. I'm going to leave that top area in shadow. It'll take a couple of coats to pick it out. So I'll get my brush dipped in water and I'll take it off there, just pull it out of the way. Leave it dry and then I'll go back in and do it again. So I'll do another coat and wait for that to dry. So I've got um, XV88, I've done one layer already. And again, I'm staying on the, the raised areas. Still quite rough, but I know where I want the, uh, the highlights to go. If you notice, I'm just using the tip of my brush here. So I'm controlling where it goes. Um, and also on my palette I've got pure Baylor Brown. I'm just going to go on top of that again but in a smaller area. See with the last colour I, I started there but this one I'm about halfway down the crease. Or well, started about there with the XV88 but with the Baylor Brown I'm starting about there. 
just to get a nice transition. So I'll do the same with up here as well. I won't start as high up as I did with the last colour. I'm going to take a couple of coats just to build it up. Now at the next stage I'll probably add in a bit of bone to this. Okay, so I've added a bit of bone to that bale or brown. Okay, so as you can see I've made a mistake there. So I'm going to sort that out with some of the original base coat, I think it's more than fang brown. And I'm just going to put it back. I'll go from the highlight area into the shadow area. Because I want to try and keep that transition. And if needs be, I'll add um, an agrax wash just to redefine it. I'm going to go back in here as well, just to bring those shadows back. I'm pushing the pigment up into that bit there. If you watch the, uh, the pros, they'll go back and forth between the highlights and shadows. In the, that's the best way to get a nice bit of contrast. Not that I'm saying I'm a pro. I wish I was. <laughs> um, right, so I might need another coat of that uh, Mournfang brown to bring it back. But um, yeah, we'll see how it dries first. Um, wasn't too bad drying, but I'm going back in with the 50 50 mix of the Agrax and the medium. And I'm just going right into the shadow there. Just to reinforce it. I'll put a little bit in there as well. Okay, and I think that's the jacket done now. So I'm going to highlight the belt next and I'm going to use the the Baylor brown but I've added some bone to it and just basically I'm going to outline the whole the whole belt and I'm just using the very tip of the brush I'm going to try not to get any on the jacket And then I've got some more on my brush now, but I've thinned it down a bit more. So basically I just dipped it in the paint and then dipped it in water and ran it across my towel, paper towel. And so it's a really dilute, almost glaze. And I'm just doing really small lines just to simulate uh, wear and tear really and I'll do the odd scratch don't worry about that blob on the top of the belt we can get, can get rid of that by just wetting the brush I'm just pulling it away. So I'll take a couple of coats just to build it up, but um, keep it thin and don't. Well, try and stay. Try and keep your brush point on the strokes that you've already done, just to define them a little bit more. And uh, we'll uh, we'll come back up for another coat. Okay, so I've done two quick coats. 
Um, I've added a little bit more bone to it and I'm just going to stay up the top. Just pick out the, uh, the top of the belt. I'm not going to go across the full length of the line, I'm just like a random pattern. And I think I'll put a little bit down the bottom as well. Get rid of a little bit of it. Okay, so what I'll do now is go back to the original um, black leather and black and I'll make a glaze and just go over the top of this. Okay, so I've got my glaze ready and it's very, very thin. And I'm pushing the paint up. So I'm starting from the middle of the belt and pushing it up. Because that bit's like a little curve there, and it looks like it's all going to be in shadow. I think one glaze should do it, I think. That's really difficult to get into that bit, so I'll do it off camera. Okay. Okay, so I've got a bit of um, some easy desert now. I'm going to start highlighting the actual coat and same deal it's about 50-50 water and paint it's quite thin and I'm just basically I'm putting it wherever I think a highlight needs punching um, sorry I just knocked the camera um, highlights are pretty good as is but we're just giving them a little tweak with this lighter colour, so... So this is totally up to your judgement now, where you think the light should be hitting. Anywhere in the middle of a big fold is always a, a given. And if you did that initial initial um, base coat, like mine, nice and thin, you should you shouldn't have any problem finding where this highlight should go. Probably do a couple of coats of this. So yeah, give it another coat of the German grey just to um, make sure that no, you know, no bits of paint from the the overcoat went into the hair when I did the base coats. So I'm ready to go. What I've got is a Vallejo colour. Where's he gone? dark blue grey. So I think black here you should always have a little bit of blue in it so I'll throw caution to the wind and I'm going to use this one. Um, I haven't watered this down at all and I'm, uh, I'm using an old uh, old brush that used to be a I don't know what size it was about a two or a three it's lost its point as you can see and I'm just using the side of it. It's like a, a dry brush technique. It's um, just to block in some lighter colour. A bit more paint on my brush. I 
Obviously we're staying away from the shadows. And what we'll do then is we'll start to pick out the strands using a lighter colour again. I'll probably add a little bit of uh, London grey to it. To start picking it out. So what I've done at the, the front is that I've left a couple of darker areas there and there and I'm going to avoid them now with the highlight. So I've added a little bit of uh, neutral grey to that, um, that blue-grey mix and I've thinned this down just a little bit. I'm staying up the top part of the beard now and I'm staying away from those bits that I've left in shadow. Unlike some of the other scalps, I think um, I'm going to do this quite roughly, I think. That's just the side of my brush catching up the top of it. that same mix now to start picking out individual hairs now instead of using the side of the brush I'm using the point as you can probably see. I was picking out bits now just to redefine them. Staying well out of the shadows. As the um, using the side of your brush is like a guide coat to tell you where all the, the raised areas are. And you can start using the point of your brush to redefine them or give them more definition. a tiny bit of white to that and just do extreme highlights on the top now maybe on the temples okay, there's only a little bit of white I've added now Actually doing this black beard now is, um, is really firing me up and motivating me to do um, Bellatrix. But I'm going to wait because I want to do her uh, later on down the line after I've done some Death Eaters. But I'll pr probably be using a similar technique to this. So, yeah, a nice bit of definition now on the hair. Um, yeah, do the trousers next. So I've got a 50-50 mix of the the blue grey and the German grey and I've watered it down a bit and basically I'm just going to do lines just to create a little bit of texture but I'm staying on the highlighted areas and we're going to build that up.
add in a little bit more blue grey to the mix. And a little bit more. And last one. So we're not quite at a, a pure blue grey yet because um, I can see them next to each other and this one's still just a, a couple more brush loads off pure blue grey yet. I love this um, technique because it you can control your highlights and you can add texture and it looks cool all right i'm going to leave that there um we'll finish off the boots now I'm going to use exactly the same as about a 50 50 mix of the blue grey and the German grey. I'll just stay on the toe cap. Got a bit too much on my brush now. But... And so I like that. I don't know what that is, it's like a flap on top of his boot. And let's highlight the soul just to pick it out. I'm not going to go mad on his shoes because you're not going to look at his shoes anyway. The, the coat and the jacket draw your eye. Um, maybe another highlight on the boot, and I'll just leave it at that. So I'm going with blue, grey, and it's about 50 50 paint and water. And it's still pretty wet on the toe cap anyway from the last colour. So it should blend in quite nicely. And the flap as well, stay on the top of the flap, on the edge of it, all the way around. A bit in there. Okay, um, belt buckle and then I think we're done. So for the belt I have started with um, Vallejo's Burnt Iron. These are lovely metals if you can get hold of some of these. And um, the next stage is to, I'm going to try and darken it down a bit. I know it's really thin, there's no real need to do it if you're happy with just the the metal colour there on its own and I'll leave it there um, but if you want to go a stage further we'll darken bits of it down and highlight other bits of it so I'm going on the underside of the buckle there Now 
now I'm going to use uh, steel mixed in with a little bit of chrome. Chrome is mega bright on its own. If you dull it down with a little bit of steel it's, um, it's more palatable. And what I'm going to do is use that Sorry, I'm just mixing and talking at the same time here. I'm going to highlight the top of the buckle there. I might need chrome on its own, we'll see. And the bottom, or the top part of the bottom half. I'm going to switch to Chrome because it's not picking it up at all really. So it's a dual Chrome. Like that. I'll do the pin. I've got the, the original burnt iron mixed with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go back in and do that bit there. Just to dull everything down. And what we can do then is get pure black and do a line between the belt and the actual buckle and at the end of the pin as well. Uh, I'll do that off camera. Some of the finishing touches that I did was the uh, I said about the the black between the the buckle and the belt, and around here as well uh, to separate the the belt and the buckle and of course that side of it and underneath the belt and across the top of the belt with black. And I did the buttonholes again with a little bit of black, only really thin, but he's pretty much done now. Again, another one I've, I've really enjoyed um, immensely. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure to paint this one. Um, so that's it. I uh, hope you really enjoyed this episode. I hope you pick things up from it. Apologies if I go off camera now and again. You know, it's really difficult to see what I'm doing sometimes. But, uh, you know, I'm only an amateur. So um, I can only get better, right? Uh yeah, if you liked it, you know, hit that like button. Um, it gives me an idea of you know how people are receiving these videos. Uh, I get the odd lovely comment from people, and uh, that motivates me to keep uh, making these videos for you. Um, so yeah, share it if you think somebody would uh, would like to benefit from it. And um, yeah, it's been a blast. We'll uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks.